Today I'm here at Kim's Pianos in Tustin, California. Typically I'd visit the Stanton, California location of Kim's Pianos, but they have a number of different stores across the Southern California area, and today I'm at their Tustin location. Their Tustin location is a little bit smaller than the Stanton location and doesn't have the selection of concert grand pianos that their Stanton location has, but there still are a number of amazing pianos here that I want to do videos on, and this here is one of them. This is a vintage Baldwin L, and I estimate it to be roughly around from the 1960s. One way I can tell that is because of this logo here that you can probably see. It is in all caps in block letter font, and it, well, it looks like this. Later models of Baldwin had a more round kind of a chubby kind of a font with a large round oval over the eye and in very late model American made Baldwins and in the new Chinese Gibson made uh, Baldwin pianos there is also no dot over the eye but it still has that same chubby font so you can kind of date the age of a Baldwin piano simply by looking at the logo generally sometimes a Baldwin will be restored and have a newer logo put on it and other times Somebody will, will basically sometimes they will restore one and put the improper date logo back on, but generally you can date them by looking at the outside. I will also read you the serial number here. It's 188124. So that's the serial number here. If any of you guys want to do a little bit of research and figure out what year this piano is from, I would greatly appreciate that. Also, the inside of the piano around the portholes on the harp, you might be able to see it there in that video. There's these little like kind of bumps around the portholes, and this wouldn't have been done in the 70s or the 80s. I have a Baldwin from 1977, and the harp design is considerably different. So that is another way to tell that this is an older piano. What made these Baldwins great? Well, there's a number of different things. The SF10 and the SD10 in particular are revered for being extremely high quality pianos from the 60s and 70s in particular, but from times before and sometimes from times after, like in the 80s, they were also known to be very good pianos as well. Essentially what was going on is at, during this time in the 60s, Steinway had gone to using a Teflon action. We used Teflon bushings in the action, and it was a really great idea. They were doing it for all the right reasons. They wanted to make improvements on the piano action. But what happened was the Teflon bushings didn't expand, while the wooden action parts around them did expand, and this caused, you know, due to, due to humidity, and this caused a number of issues for many years. During this time, Steinway's reputation fell, but also during this time, Baldwin's reputation was improving and at one point there were actually many people were actually replacing their Steinways on stage with Baldwin's my personal Baldwin SF10 again from 1977 actually came from Davies Hall in San Francisco and it was in earlier in its life it was being used there when it was brand new and another thing that's kind of interesting is that Baldwin, at one point in its past, actually purchased the German company C. Beckstein and actually made a number of improvements to the American Baldwin pianos based on some of the, the differences that they found in Beckstein pianos. And one of those improvements was the Renner Action. During the 60s and 70s, Baldwin was using Renner Actions, and they are absolutely wonderful actions that you will still find in virtually every new piano to this day, and this one most certainly features one. Not only that, but it's also extremely well well regulated too. It's very, very light, very precise, and really fun to play. So without any further ado, let me play box Fugue from the Well-Tempered Clavier Book 1, and I hope you guys will enjoy hearing that on this panel.
As you can hear, this piano has a bright, pure tone that is actually a bit unlike many of the pianos I typically review. When I look for a piano, I look for an instrument that has a warm, rich tone in the mid-range, a deep, thunderous bass, and often I like the sound of a bright, sparkly treble. This piano, however, takes that kind of bright, sparkly sound that you'd find often in a German piano and kind of just brings it down more into the mid-range of the piano, so the rest of the piano is also bright as well. Some people do not like that sound, but many others do, and for those of you who like a bright, sparkly piano sound, this particular Baldwin L would be an excellent, excellent choice. Unlike some pianos that are bright and sound annoying, in my opinion, and hopefully it sounds this way on the recording too, this piano, while it is bright, is actually very pleasant to listen to, and I really enjoy playing it. Not only that, but the action of it also is very pleasant to play. It's very light, and while it isn't quite as precise as you would find in a modern piano, it works perfectly fine for virtually everything I want to throw at it. It struggled a little bit on those trills, but I think part of that was me, because this is actually my first time playing a piano all of today, and if I warmed up a little bit, I'd probably be able to play those trills a little bit better. As I said, it doesn't quite have the precision that you would find in a modern piano action, especially for that fugue, because the fugue has many of those different melody lines that you have to bring out subtly throughout the piece of music. But also, that type of precision wouldn't be found in a piano that is this instrument's price point. That type of precision I'm referencing there that allows me to bring out the subtle melodies in that Bach piece would be found in a piano that's twice, three times, or even more times the price of this instrument, which is under $20,000. So not only is this a solidly well-built piano in the uh, made in America during a really great time for this piano company, but also it has a really nice sound, a very, very good action, and it's also affordable. So it's basically got everything going for it, and also it's very attractive as well, in my opinion. It is a older piano, but it has been very well cared for during its life. Everything in here is actually original, except the dampers appear to have been replaced for some reason. Uh, I believe so. Either they've been replaced or they're just in really great condition, which also could be true. Anyways, this is a really fantastic piano kept in great condition, and I'm going to play a little bit more on it to give you guys a bit more of a sound of the instrument. I really enjoy playing it. The other thing I really love about this piano is actually the sound of the bass. As I mentioned, this piano appears to me to be entirely all original, and while it has been well cared for, the bass strings, of course, over their lives from the, I believe, the 60s, have collected a small amount of dust and debris that is very normal for piano bass strings to do. So that means they're not quite in optimal condition anymore, although they aren't far away. Considering that, the piano still has an impressive bass sound, especially when you look at the fact that it's around a six foot five piano. Sometimes pianos like this can have a tubby sound to the bass. Not this one. Even the low A actually sounds decent, and this is more of the sound I'd expect from a seven foot piano like a Baldwin SF10. To me, that sounds very good for a all original 1960s piano.
I really hope that this piano sounds as good on recording as it does in person because to me it sounds absolutely wonderful. It is on the brighter side, but it has this nice pure tone that is reminiscent of C. Beckstein. I wonder if Baldwin changed the scale design of their pianos to reflect that German maker. It really has a pure, wonderful tone, and like I mentioned earlier in the video, it is actually quite affordable. Many of you might know the Baldwin name even to this day because there are in fact pianos being produced today with the Baldwin name on them. However, while during the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, Baldwin is being produced here in the States, these days it's being produced overseas in Asia, I believe in China. And as a result, modern Baldwins made in China are really nothing special. They're not the worst Chinese piano you could buy, but they're a far cry from the amazing, amazing piano that this instrument is and many of its brethren from the same time period would be. So. That's another thing I wanted to point out is that finding a new piano in this same price point under 20,000 that plays and sounds and will last as long and plays and sounds as good as this one will, I think would be a serious challenge. So that is the other thing that is great about this piano. It's a time-tested design. These Baldwin pianos are absolute workhorses. You could practice on this thing every single day for like four years and it would still be fine. It would need some hammer work and it would need some regulation work, but it would be far from dead and it would keep on ticking for many years to come, which is absolutely impressive. One thing that this piano does lack, however, that a new piano might have a small advantage over would be the dynamic range. This piano does not have the pianissimo control that you would find in a modern piano, but once again, this pianissimo range I'm referencing would be found in a piano twice or three times the cost, so it's not really a fair comparison, but I did just get back from the NAMM show, and there are the world's greatest pianos there on display at the show, so I'm a little bit spoiled for the next few days. However, the reason that this instrument doesn't have the pianissimo control of a newer, more expensive piano is because the hammers are brighter. But there is an advantage to that. These hard hammers give it a massive amount of power that you generally wouldn't see in a piano of this size. Check this out. Not too many pianos of this size, especially of this price point, could actually do that and do that that easily. I'm really, really impressed by the power and the, what's the word I'm looking for here? It has a stable sound when I'm playing it loud. It doesn't sound like it's being strained and being pushed past its limits. It feels very happy to play loudly. I really don't think you'd be able to find a piano, a new piano, in this same price point, under 20000 that could play a piece like that as loud as that and actually sound that good. So once again, I'm really, really, it's really pleasant to play this piano. I just had a lost words there because I, I unexpectedly liked this piano way more than I thought I would. It's a relatively small piano. It's a affordable piano that's made with high quality components that will last you many, many years to come. It has a great action, it has a great sound, and it also has a brighter tone for those of you who enjoy that sound. When I first sat down at it and heard that it was bright, I wasn't sure I was gonna like it, but actually I really do. It's not the annoying, overly powerful type of bright. It's the clean, 
crisp type of bright that you might find in a German piano, but yet this one is made in the States. And it's just absolutely great, and I really, really love it. And on top of that, it's all original, in really fantastic condition, and it looks beautiful as well. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this demo here of this Baldwin L from the 60s. Used pianos can sometimes be absolutely great deals, and this would be one of them. If I was still looking for a practice piano for my recording studio, I would probably be seriously considering this because while it is brighter and I generally don't like that tone, it sounds good, it plays excellent, and it would last for a very long time, unlike a new Baldwin most likely would. So I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It's an absolutely fantastic piano, and I hope you liked it. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, and all kinds of other cool instruments too. And if any of that sounds cool, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.